Um, hi, thanks for joining us today at Inclusion Fusion. I'm Katie Weatherby with Key Ministry, and I'm really excited about this module that we're offering about siblings of children with disabilities. Um, we have with us the children of Colleen Swindoll Thompson, and they are going to share with us a little bit about what it's like to be a sibling of a child with special needs. So I'm going to let you all introduce yourselves. Why don't you start with you, Cody? I'm Cody, and I'm 20 years old, and I go to Collin College. I'm uh, John's older stepbrother. And um, when I'm not um, either at school or at work, I like hanging out with friends, just doing normal kid stuff. I'm just a regular college kid. and uh, um, You know, when you're around John, it's a, that's another full-time job, so it's something that you have to be cognizant of. Uh, you, you have to kind of take the time that you're given and split it between uh, work, school, church, John, and then social time. Uh, my name is Ashley Dane. I'm John's older sister. He's my younger by four years. I am also a college student. We actually go to the same college. And uh, when I am not at school or at work, I also like hanging out with my friends. But most of all, I have been really, really motivated to pursue um, my dream career as an exotics veterinarian. Having John as a little sibling, it doesn't put your dreams on hold. You just have to be determined enough to go and get it. And believe it or not, he's actually a really big motivator for that sort of stuff. So it's, it's really nice, believe it or not, if you see a silver lining. I'm Austin, and I'm 17 years old, and I go to Wakeland High School in Frisco, Texas. I am younger than these two, and I'm older than my brother Jonathan by three years. Uh, I'm really involved in the theater in my school, and I'm... Um, uh, I'm involved in an agency right now called Core Talent, and they work with me on acting. And I'll be playing baseball in the spring. Uh, I've played football in at Wakeland, and uh, right now I'm just uh, going through junior year. It's going to be really busy, but you know that's that's high school, being really busy and enjoying every moment of it. So great, thank you. So for for you all, when did you first begin to think that there might be something that was different about your little brother? I guess this would apply to just me and Austin, right, but right. you know, I, I would think that when you first met John, you were aware of the fact that he was special needs. But, but um, I guess you can pull the question to what did what did you know you think about it? If we're going this way, <laughs> it doesn't matter. Yeah. Well, when I first when I first met y'all, it was um, it was after the first date that Colleen and my dad had had, mm -hmm. and uh, I came to the house. It seemed. Um, just like a normal family, and then oh, and then, 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 I, then I got to know them, <laughs> and um, and I met John, and I mean, you know, it, you know right away that something is different about him, and not necessarily bad, just different. And I think I think what people tend to think now is that different is bad, and that's not always the case. And when I first met him, I thought, well, there's something different, but I really didn't know, so I didn't have any specific opinions about it. I just realize that something was different. Okay. How about you, Ashley? For me, I was really young at the time that Jonathan was born, so I didn't I didn't really understand and the, the fact that he wasn't even a part of our family for the longest time. He was in, in the hospital and that's where he lived in and out for the first couple years of his life. Um, but as soon as he did come and um, start living with us, I did realize that there was something that was a little bit, you know, just off about him. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I was also fine with it. I was completely open to it. You know, when you're a kid, um, accepting other children is a whole bunch easier, actually, mm -hmm. than, than when you're older and you've gotten accustomed to the social norms of this world. Um, so I'm going to have to say, when, when I first discovered that there was something wrong with, with John and I had that talk with my mom, it actually didn't even affect what I thought about him as a sibling mm -hmm. or as a person even. I just realized that there is a little bit of something different and that I was going to have to, to conform to that. And it's just, that's the way it's been ever since. Okay. So how about you? Uh, for me, it's never really been like, when did you know that he was different? I mean, I, I'm really close to him and mm -hmm. I hung out with him all the time when I was a little kid. And it was never a matter of when did you find out it was just I always knew mm -hmm. somehow I just always knew that he wasn't like a like me and Ashley, mm -hmm. but I, I get along with him just the same. Um, 
you know, it's just one of those brother things, you know, you have you have a connection. It's like telekinesis. You, you understand <laughs> someone, someone when you're talking to them. So I, it was never a direct point. It was, I, I pretty much always knew just how he interacted with me. Okay. So as you were growing up, was, was it allowed in your family to talk a little bit about the differences that he had? Was there a freedom in your home to discuss what was going on with him? We, we grew up in a home where that was not commonly accepted. Okay. Um, okay. We never talked about it with our biological dad. Mm -hmm. it, it, um, it never really became a topic subject. We didn't, it never, just never came up. Okay. With, with him, with my mom, I don't know about you. On the other hand, with my mom, she was really always very passionate about my little brother and mm -hmm. finding out what he needed. I mean, providing for her children, period. She has a, she's an amazing mother and um, it's just always been a real passion of hers. So when it came to my little brother, it's almost like she was perfect for the job. She was mm. perfect for having a child with autism, even though it was hard for her to discover that. Um, mm. So as, as I grew up, it became more of a topic between my mom and I. And mm -hmm. as I tried to fit in, you know, find my place in junior high or middle school and mm -hmm. in high school, um, I think that was the hardest part. When I was a child, it was easier to accept because it didn't directly affect my, my living. However, mm -hmm. when you're walking through Walmart and um, your little brother with Tourette's has his um, uh, audible ticks, ticks it, mm -hmm. it, you just, you want to walk away and say, I don't sure. know this person, <laughs> but right. they are weird. Um, and it, it's sad to say that, but, and it's hard to understand unless you're a sibling, mm -hmm. but it is, it's true. You don't always want to accept it and it's not always something that you want to talk about. It's, it's, um, it's not something that everybody can understand, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. It just never, never really came up in our family. I really didn't start to comprehend how different or how vastly um, separated he was from a normal person until we uh, moved from California back to Texas. Okay. And that's when I really started realizing, you know, Johnny's not like anyone else. Because mm -hmm. before, I mean, he, he, was, he was quieter. Um, he and changed a lot. He, changed oh my lot. gosh, he has blossomed since we moved back here. But before, he just he wasn't given the chance to um, become the person he is today. Mm -hmm. And so I don't I don't think that we really were um, aware of any any of that internal struggle that he had until he mm -hmm. made it obvious to us. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. he's he's begun to express himself, and all of that wonderful wonderful process has actually happened. Um, and it's, it's been really fun to watch, actually, and be a part of. You know, I really appreciate that you talked a little bit about how it can be kind of humiliating if your brother is ticking or having a meltdown yeah. or oh my struggling in a public place. Yeah. Um, and I think that that's going to be an encouragement to some other siblings who feel that way but sometimes are not allowed to maybe talk about it at home and say, you know, this really embarrasses me or it's really hard when he does that and I feel very self-conscious. Um, and what I would say is it's normal to feel that way for any teenager. Um, so I really appreciate that you guys were willing to share that um, because I think it's really true. Um, so when John was little, he gained skills and then he really regressed. Um, talk a little bit about that time, and Cody, I know that you weren't part of the family at, at that time. But talk a little bit about what that was like and how that affected your mom and maybe even your relationship with your mom. <clears throat> There's a lot of turmoil that happens when uh, parents separate. Mm -hmm. And he can't understand mm -hmm. why someone just leaves the house mm -hmm. and doesn't come back. Right. It's not an average thing. Mm -hmm. For him, days may seem like years or seconds. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, time is completely irrelevant when it comes to someone is gone. He could think you're gone forever. He could think you're gone for 10 minutes. You know, he, he doesn't really um, get the fact that we're a family and we love him very much. And even with his autistic disabilities, we're not going to stop loving him. And that's what the world should see is that you should give love to anyone with autistic disabilities. Mm -hmm. I think because of our love, he was able to gain more progress and he saw, um, he saw more hope in himself. But hope is really difficult for an autistic child to see because they are self-conscious. They realize mm -hmm. who they are. Mm -hmm. They just don't know how to express themselves. It's like being stuck in, the, yeah. in a body that doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. he's completely, he might have um, autism and um, slight 
um, mental disabilities also, but he is still going through those middle school, trying to figure out how you are, mm -hmm. talking back to mom and dad. He still does that exact same thing. Mm -hmm. He's exactly like any other kid, just with some special needs. Mm -hmm. And I think when when my little brother regressed, and I, I can barely remember it because it had already started happening, sure. and it's just how it always had been. He started uh, learning words, really expressing himself, and then all of a sudden it was just like he was a shell. Mm -hmm. um, and that was really discouraging. You don't really understand how much it affects you until it happens to you when, when a family member, um, a essential part of that family unit stops talking mm -hmm. and you can't get them to express themselves. It immediately causes a sensible change in the family structure. It's a lot. It, it mm -hmm. is. It's like they've, it's almost like they've passed away. It's like you've lost, you know, you've lost someone that you've always known to be there. Mm -hmm. When someone changes dramatically, it, it's usually just, it's heartbreaking to see it happen. And when they're back, it's just so enlightening and so, it's so um, empowering to see how someone with disabilities mm -hmm. can go from such a hard, difficult time to such a prosperous life. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm just really happy that he's getting, getting back the way he was. Right. Some kids tell us, um, kids of, of siblings with disabilities will tell us that they feel kind of resentful sometimes mm -hmm. because the child with disabilities is getting a lot of attention. And it's so true. A lot of time, um, a lot of expensive kinds of things that yeah. go along with um, therapies Medical or meals. motivators. Um, talk a little bit about that in your family. And I, I'm sure even as, as new as you are to these guys, um, you've seen that too. Um, talk a little bit about what that's like. Well, the thing a lot of normal teenagers or a lot of people with a uh, sibling of disabilities misconceive is that their their parents are not doing it for the fact of ignoring them. They're mm -hmm. doing it for the fact that the autistic children needs them. Mm -hmm. and a lot of time they're thinking, well, they're giving their attention because they don't love me or they're giving their attention because someone's more important. No, they're giving their attention because they need it. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, it's you know, necessary. Yeah. You, they, you need someone to work on a car for it to work. Mm -hmm. And right now, autistic children, they, they're just left with an engine, and they need someone to help them. And it's, it's just a long process, and a lot of teenagers just don't know how to feel, or they're a lot really upset because because their parents are giving more love to someone else. And, you know, if I was in a place, if, if I had, like, no idea where I was, and I was confused a lot of the time, and I had no um, imagination or sense of time, mm -hmm. I, I need some extra help. Sure. I can't survive without it, so that's their placement. I, I, um, I really, really, really struggled a lot with resentment as far as my little brother is concerned. Mm -hmm. um, I, as a child, as independent as I was, I still, I still did want that kind of love and affection. And I, um, I began to act out based on not receiving that. And mm -hmm. it, uh, I've also struggled with a sense of entitlement, like mm -hmm. I am worth that attention. And it sounds it sounds really really selfish, but I I wanted John to be able to make his own meals, and I mean he can do stuff like that now, but um, it's it's difficult for my mom to adjust to that like it would be for anybody. So resentment for me it it's been a huge problem, and mm -hmm. um, through counseling as well as talking more about this with my mom and some parents, the problem is they are not open to talking about it, and. After that, the child is like, well, what do I do? How do, uh, how do I get this attention that I need? And it's not acting out because mm -hmm. bad attention is better than no attention at all. Um, and so those parents that have that problem with their children, they question, well, I give you everything. I've mm -hmm. raised you right. What's, what's, you know, what's the missing link here? Right. You just got to You got to listen. You got to pay attention. You got to be willing to give up some of, some of that, that time. Um, maybe some special time just mm -hmm. with you know you and you with the your child mm -hmm. you really have to be willing to dedicate that time to them um, I can speak for nearly every special needs sibling out there when I say that a parent's love is important and you can't substitute it with anything else and I, I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of special needs siblings didn't really realize that 
until maybe it was, was told to them. I certainly didn't realize it was going on until down the line looking back. Um, and then I can say that that was, that was why I acted out mm -hmm. and um, did some of the things that I did and completely shut off in some aspects. And it really, it really affected my family. It really hurt them. Um, and I wish that it had been different. It seems to me, just because we've hung out a little bit at lunch today and we've talked a little bit, it seems like um, there's been a lot of work towards reconciliation with yeah. you and your mom. You and your mom have a great time together. Um, there's a lot of laughing between all of you. So um, it, it would seem to me that there's definitely hope if a teenager or a younger sibling of a child with disabilities is in that situation, that that doesn't have to be the end of the story. Oh my gosh, no. People are always growing and changing. I can definitely say from a couple of years back, I have done a 360. I mean, oh man, you can ask my mom. I was a problem child. <coughs> you can ask him. <laughs> yeah, 180, 360? 180, not a 360. Some, some kind of skateboard trick, I'm sure. Uh, this is 360. Okay. That's All right, thank you, my geometry teacher. <laughs> but you can, you can definitely ask my siblings. There's, there's right. been um, a drastic and noticeable change. That's yeah, cool. for sure. It was really difficult growing up with this one right here. And, oh, so you can uh, <laughs> <laughs> But uh, we're, we're such a blessed family. I mean, we have such a great team to work with, and we call ourselves a team all the time. We don't consider ourselves, you know, members of a family. We're just a team. We work together all the time, mm -hmm. or at least we try to. You know, Cody, he's always got my back, and I've, I'm trying to get his back. And Ashley is really compassionate about John, and we always want um, to better each other. And Ashley's made a great change, and it's great to uh, be her brother now, comparatively to now. four <laughs> years ago. And um, she has done a 180, and... Uh, we've all just changed in different ways. And when you have an autistic sibling, it's not a bad thing. Actually, it's a pretty good thing because you, a lot of perks. You, know, you realize uh, how other people are in life and you can connect to them so easily because you have the patience and you have the knowledge of how to deal with someone in their worst state. And then you go out in the world and you can uh, deal with people in their normal states. So. It's, it's really good people skills. Mm -hmm. It's I, I thought that having um, a sibling with special needs was a bad thing until I really looked at it closely and discovered that I have a lot more patience than than people who are my age, I think. Um, or at least that's what my mom has told me. Mm -hmm. um, it matures you faster. You, faster. Um, yeah, it, you really get, and sometimes that's um, considered a bad thing, but other times it, it's just the life experience that molds your future um, according to how much you can handle. Um, and maturing faster obviously increases the uh, ability to handle those things. Cody, you kind of married into all of this, <laughs> so to speak. What did, you, what did you think when your dad started dating Pauline and you knew that there were some significant things going on in this family? Well, my dad had gotten a divorce two years prior mm -hmm. to that, and he was still having trouble with that, and he all the time told us how sad he was that we weren't around him. Mm -hmm. But uh, when when I first met Colleen mm -hmm. and then I first met the whole family, I was shocked. I, 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 <laughs> <laughs> it was it was a lot to take in all at once. Sure. But we went back home that night and I told my dad, I said, I said, Dad, we have an Dad, we have enough problems. I said, two two more kids and then and then a third with autism and then and then Colleen and I joke all the time that I thought she was a pink booter. I thought that she <laughs> did, wouldn't that? do... <laughs> Why well, don't you if you, want, that? if you want a definition, it's someone who won't do anything. I thought she was a girly girl. I thought she was really needy. And I told uh -huh. my dad, I told my dad that. I said, I don't think we need that right now, Dad. Mm -hmm. I said, you have, we have enough stuff to deal with ourselves. I said, I mean, I'm in high school. Riley's in middle school. I mean, we can't, we can't take all this in. I said, it's just a lot. And... I think something that caught me by surprise is how well we've gotten to know each other and how well we get along. Um, I mean, not a day goes by that I don't learn something new about them, but it's not necessarily this something one. that's <laughs> it's not necessarily <laughs> something that's shocking. It's just something sure. that you're like, oh, well, that's something new. But when I first moved in, I thought to myself, oh, this is going to be awful. You know, three <laughs> other three other kids in the same house. Mm -hmm. 
I said, I, you know, I'm just going to be tortured the whole time. But, but. And you have. Yeah, and I have. Maybe, yeah, and you have. That's necessarily not been a complete lie. But, um, but. You like at, transparency. Right. Um, <laughs> important. But as we've gotten to know each other, I think it's amazing how well we've worked together. And. And how long have Colleen and your dad been married? It's been, it will be three years. Okay. In we'll just say too long. March. <laughs> oh, wonderful. It'll be three years in March, I, and they March yeah. or April. Like, April. It's, it's April. It's April. It's April. April fourth. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what mm -hmm. I thought. And um, it's just it's just really not very long. No. No, it's crazy. It's crazy how you bond with people that you live with. It's felt, it's <laughs> felt like it's felt like that we've known each other for a long time. I mean, when we sit down at dinner, much longer. When, Those when are some we, interesting we, conversations. We, we sat down at dinner at, at a cruise that we went on just mm -hmm. just a couple months ago. And there were people around us telling us, "Oh, your family's so great. Y'all just y'all have so many memories. Y'all talk listening to us talk. About, talk. <laughs> y'all talk about anything and everything. And John's there, and John's talking with uh -huh. us. Or he sleeps about, at the table. Or he yeah. sleeps at the table because he gets tired. Yeah. And, and and it's just it's just great to be able to take that for what it's worth. Not necessarily be like, well, you know, woe is me. Sure. We're in this situation, but." We, we see that we're in the situation, we say, well, instead of thinking about how bad it is, how can we make the best out of this situation? Yeah, and there's no way, if you're a special needs sibling, that you can be happy if you go and throw yourself a pity party. It doesn't work like that. You gotta have an attitude of being positive. You have to want to be happy. And um, that also sounds a bit negative, but it isn't. It's a great motivator. It's an awesome motivator. Are there mm -hmm. days that any of you have said to the other, John is on my nerves today and I just can't yes. deal with him oh. one more minute. Yes. Oh yeah, it, ha it, <laughs> yes, it, happens, it happens weekly and monthly. It, yes. It, it's a complicated process. Out of mm -hmm. all the autistic children I've worked with, because I work at our church mm -hmm. with the autistic children, we have mm -hmm. an event called Fun Zone, mm -hmm. and that's mm -hmm. every, which is a great program at Stonebriar Community Church, by the way. You take your um, take your autistic, autistic children there and, and uh, we or watch them for you. just disabled. I mean, it's, yeah, either, it, it's, it's either. not limited to autism. And um, out of all the cases, John's the worst. And I look at other autistic children and their siblings say, it's so bad, you know, he always talks all the time. <laughs> and, you know, I'm like, our brother talks all the time. He has Tourette's. Mm -hmm. He's mentally disabled. He can't sleep at night, you know. It's difficult when you have someone like that. And come downstairs but, at 2 a.m., he's fixing himself a sandwich. Yeah. I mean, I mean it's... She, it's just such. It's so awesome to have a great team like like us working with him, and um, I, I would not have it any other way. Cause like, like you said, mm -hmm. like Ashley said, it's it's a, it's a great motivator. You can't look back on your life and say, why can't it be different? Please get me out of the situation. It never works anyway. Because nothing's gonna change. What is it gonna do to complain? You're not gonna get anywhere, and actually, you're gonna regress. You're gonna you're gonna make a 180 again, and you're, mm -hmm. not, and you're gonna go back the other way. So what you want to do is you want to think about the pros and the cons mm -hmm. and try and list, list out how much more you can grow, how better of a person you become, and how much more love you can extend to your family comparatively to complaining, not helping out, and uh, not helping your parents out with the situation because they're probably trying a lot harder than we are. And no matter how much you look at it and say it's a bad thing, God puts that kid in your life for a purpose, for a reason. He might close the doors that you thought were going to be open, but he has a purpose for it, and it makes you the person that you are today. It is an incredible, like I've said, it's an incredible motivator, and um, without it, you probably won't be as strong as, as you grow to be. Mm -hmm. um, no matter what, there's always a purpose for it. Always. I can definitely say that I wouldn't be where I am right now without John, which, um, like I've said before also, some people would, would look at it as a bad thing. I look at it as, as positive. As positive. <laughs> and I wouldn't have said that a few years ago. Um, just going back to the how you can change, I wouldn't have said that. It's surprising. So talk a little bit to kids who might not have a close sibling network. There are lots of families mm -hmm. where there's one child with special needs and one typically developing child, and there isn't another sibling to That's rally tough. around. What advice would you have for those kids? Oof, man. It's really, really tough. When we, it, it's been easier for us um, time management-wise because we have um, we have four kids living in We have three of us living mm -hmm. in the family. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we'll be like, okay, I'll take care of John this Saturday. You guys can take care of him on Wednesday during mm -hmm. the summer because he doesn't have school during the summer. And 
I'll be like, it, it'll 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 work itself out usually. And my stepdad, teamwork. Mm-hmm. My stepdad comes home from work mm-hmm. at about four o'clock, and, and he can take over for the rest of the night. Mm-hmm. So it's pretty mm-hmm. easy. But yeah, if you're if you're a if, if, you're, if you're living by yourself with with your parents and an autistic child, it's gonna be rough. Uh, Automatically. The only thing you can really do, um, besides looking towards the future, is grow from it. Think about read read the Bible and think about um, what God says about people being different and um, growing from certain situations. Because you're always going to have a challenge in life. Nothing's going to be coming easily um, every single day. You're going to have a challenge. You don't have a typical sibling. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. just not an option anymore. Yeah. But another mm-hmm. thing that helps is having friends and developing a um, a very strong structure with your friends um, where you're able to talk about your your problems and your issues or even getting a counselor. There's no shame in going to talk to somebody about this stuff. No shame at all because it's tough. It's tough. And you're going to be stuck in a rut if you don't go and get those, those feelings out and um, talk about how you wish things would be different because you are going to wish things were different. Mm-hmm. We all wish things were different in life. And if, if you're on the internet and you're looking for videos about how to uh, make life easier and, and look for advice, be like, advice 101 from YouTube, you know. Mm-hmm. I mean, no one else is going to tell you differently besides it's tough. And if you keep on telling yourself, I want a different answer, I want a different solution mm-hmm. to what's problem I'm in right now, I mean, you're not going to find one. You're going to have to stick it out. You can wish that it was different, but it's, it's better not to dwell on that. It's um, more, more positive for you not to dwell on that and for everybody else. Because, like we've said before, it's not going to change anything. I think something that a lot of people have trouble with coming to grip with is whenever they have a sibling with special needs, Mm -hmm. they think to themselves, well, I'm not qualified to do this. Mm -hmm. (laughs) They say, well, God, I, I, you know, I'm not qualified to do this. Why did you pick me? And I think something important to remember is that God doesn't call the qualified. He qualifies the called. Mm -hmm. So he puts that person into your life not because he, think you, he thinks you can handle it, but because he thinks this will help you learn how to handle it. Because he knows you can handle it. You can handle it. Mm-hmm. Just a matter of, of trying and not giving up, looking at the negatives. You've all touched on aspects of faith, um, but I, I want to know a little more specifically, how has the experience of being John's sibling affected your faith and your relationship with the Lord? I'll be the first to say I got mad at him. <laughs> I've gotten angry. I wanted to be normal. And I wasn't a normal kid in the first place. Mm-hmm. So having an autistic sibling was just like like one more thing that I had to worry about. Right. And um, so I, I did struggle with that anger and the bitterness and the resentment towards John and towards God. Mm-hmm. But um, after after I you know thought about it and rationalized it, talked about, uh, about it with my counselor and even my mom, Mm-hmm. Um, I realized that um, no matter how much resentment I have, no matter how hard it is, um, I can't be mad at God for this. He's, in essence, given me a gift a, of having a sibling that's not like everybody else's, an experience that not everybody has, mm-hmm. an understanding that not everyone will possess. It's a great life skill, and it teaches you a lot about yourself, surprisingly, mm-hmm. I'd have to say. My mom uh, made an, al- an analogy she made, uh, she formed, and being the most loving mother ever and being um, one of the most faithful women ever, uh, it's, it was really powerful to how I looked at myself. Mm-hmm. And she said, God sees us as we see John. You know, God sees us as we are not able to complete a mission, as, um, well, we are unable to complete a mission. We're not able to earn salvation by ourselves. We need help. We need to be in the scriptures. You know, same, same kind of aspect goes for John. He needs us, and he needs to grow, and we can help him with that. There's perhaps and, some different way, yeah. but it's, it's the same. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Not saying we're God or anything, but we, have, um, we see him as differently and, and as um, completely separated mm-hmm. as God is holy from us. So I, I thought that was really strong in my heart and really powerful play. Mm-hmm. Because it helps you understand and have more compassion. How, how much of a different situation John is in. So it, it's, it's helped my faith so much. I mean, you can't grow from easy situations. You only grow from hard situations. And if I didn't have Jonathan, more things would be a lot easier, and I wouldn't grow. I wouldn't have grown. I think something that, that you learn whenever you have a special needs kid 
come into your life is you learn you learn the depth of your compassion whenever before before I came into this family and I knew John I guess I didn't truly know what compassion was all about I thought that it was just loving somebody but it whenever I met John I look at him and I I thought to myself I I love this guy I mean you know I and it's not it's not just it's not just any kind of love it's a it's like like what Austin says when God looks down upon us and says you know I, I know that you can't do this by yourself but I love you and that's that's enough you know it, I just it it touched me in a profound way when I figured out that compassion was something it's like it's like grace it's a gift that you give to someone and it's a gift to yourself when you can feel it for someone Austin and mm -hmm. Ashley and Cody thank you so much for sharing all of this information with us mm -hmm. and we hope that this will be an encouragement to you in your ministry and especially to other siblings of kids with special needs thanks for joining us for inclusion fusion